What's up, everyone? I'm Stuart, and I am really glad you're here. I got a question for you. Have you ever just had a bad day? I have a day in seventh grade that is one of the worst of my life. It was basketball tryouts. Now, I was in seventh grade, and they took all eighth graders and five seventh graders. So I knew I just had to get one of those five spots. And I knew, like, I was borderline. A couple of the guys I knew who were going to make it. Two days of tryouts. You get to the end of it. Okay, everybody in the locker room. All right, here's the five guys who made it and he names I could literally tell you the first and last name of all five guys because it's etched in my memory so these five guys make it I'm very sad this was terrible I really wanted to make it especially because my friends were some of the ones who made it and I was already starting to just feel lonely about the whole season to come but that's not the end of the story then he says okay everybody's dismissed Stuart will you stay and a, a little bit of hope right? Are you feeling it? A little bit of hope seeps into the story. Now, here's what he says. Stuart, I still can only take five. I just want you to know that you were the sixth. Like it's going to make me feel any better. Seriously, I was the sixth, which still means, by the way, you're cut. And I kept you longer to tell you that you were cut, like double cut. Now, I don't know if that's exactly what your bad days look like. Maybe you've been there. Maybe it looks like something else. But I know that all of us have had bad days. In fact, maybe you're there right now. Because the truth is, life is hard for all of us sometimes. But it's important to remember the promise that Jesus made about getting the most out of life. It's a promise that says when we follow him, we can have a full, amazing life. We get an invitation to the greatest party there is. But when challenges come and life gets hard and bad days happen, that doesn't feel like much of a party, does it? And here, when I say party, I'm talking about any effort to celebrate, serve, or enjoy others in a way that adds value to life. So being a party starter means being someone who does that for others, not just in the good times, but also in the bad. But can I just be real with you for a second? For me, being a party starter for the people in my life is a lot easier to do when things are going great. When a friend makes the winning shot in the championship game or gets a lead in a play or passes the class that they worked really hard in, that's easy to celebrate. But when they're struggling, when they lose a family member or their parents get divorced or they're dealing with something like anxiety or depression, then it's a lot harder to figure out how to be the party starter. It's hard to know what to do when somebody we care about is struggling. Maybe that's because we're not sure what to do or say to help them. Maybe that's because we don't really relate or understand what they're going through. Maybe we feel like what they're dealing with isn't that big of a deal. But if being a party starter means showing up for others no matter what, then we've got to figure out how to do that no matter what. No matter what challenges they're facing, no matter if we're unsure how to help, no matter if we understand or not. So how do we do that? Here's the good news. Knowing how to relate to other people in their challenges and suffering, it's not a new problem. In fact, as long as people have existed, they've struggled, not just with pain, hardship, and difficulties, but with understanding how to help one another through it. Thousands of years ago, some people were going through a really difficult time. There was a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of challenges, and a lot of sadness. And during that time, many people felt like nobody was there for them, including God. When God's people needed God the most, it felt like God wasn't showing up, wasn't understanding, and wasn't doing much to help. But God always has a plan. And at that time, God's plan was to do something unexpected to remind people then and us today that in their pain and suffering, God was there. That plan, well, it was Jesus. In their struggles, the people were waiting for someone to show up. And then God showed up by sending Jesus, which is what we celebrate at Christmas every year. This was such a big deal that a prophet or someone God chose to speak to people through announced the birth of Jesus by proclaiming these words. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And this may seem like a simple verse, but don't miss the meaning here. When people were struggling, suffering, and looking for somebody to help, God sent Jesus to be with them. That's literally what his name means, God with us. It's not God fixes us or God solves all our problems or God makes us feel better. While that may be what we all want sometimes, that isn't what God sent Jesus to do. God sent Jesus to simply be present 
to be with us, to show up when we need someone the most. Think of it like this. Do you have something at home that brings you comfort when you're going through something really tough? Maybe it's a stuffed animal or a blanket from when you were younger or even a family pet. For me, I brought this. I wanted to show you. It's a blanket from childhood, but not just any blanket. Mine specifically has like a smooth, velvety side and then the other side, this like super soft, fuzzy side. And because of how long it's been around, check this out. The seam is coming undone, so it ends up working like a sleeping bag for me, like the world's first snuggie. It's amazing. Oh, anyway, where was I? Okay, so these things, they don't try to fix our problems. They don't try to make us feel better with their words. No, they're just present. They're just there when we need them the most. And their presence can help us feel better. And as party starters, that's what we can do for the people in our lives who need us too. Because a party starter shows up to be with others in their difficulties. When our friends are struggling, when the people in our lives are suffering, when our loved ones experience heartbreak and pain and loss, we don't have to wonder what to do. We can follow God's lead and simply show up. We can be present. We can just be with them. Doing that actually means showing empathy. Empathy means we have the ability to understand and share in what other people are feeling. It's the willingness just to show up and be with someone in the middle of what they're going through. And that's it. We don't have to have all the right words or have all the answers to fix their problems or even be able to relate with what they're specifically facing. All we need to do is show up. And empathy helps us to do just that because the party starter shows up to be with others in their difficulties. Now, maybe you're thinking, can showing up really make that much of a difference? Well, I know it can because it definitely did for me. One of my friends who made the team, one of my seventh grade friends who got to join all the eighth graders for that basketball season, his name is Kyle. And Kyle's still one of my closest friends to this day. But what he did for me that day was just be present. When everybody else got released and he just kept me behind, Kyle was the only person who didn't get in the car with his parent and drive home. He asked his mom if she would wait until I came out. And I came out and he was just there. He saw the emotion in my face. It was very emotional for me. Uh, it was hard, it was lonely, and he was just present. See what I mean? My friend Kyle noticed I was struggling and cared enough to show up and support me in it. That's empathy in action. And that's what a party starter does. It's what I wanna challenge all of us to do too. First, notice those who are struggling. Open your eyes to what's happening in the lives of those around you. Who's struggling? Who's going through something difficult? Who just seems like they're having a lot of bad days? Pay attention to the people around you who might be struggling right now. Then care about what they're going through. And this will be easier for some of us than others. Some of us are naturally empathetic. You feel what other people are feeling and care a lot about what they're going through. And for others of you and me, getting into what other people are going through just doesn't come as naturally. And that's okay. Either way, we can ask God to help us care about what the people around us are going through. We can pray for God to give us a heart that's moved to care when we notice somebody suffering. Finally, show up. Showing up is empathy in action. It's not fixing, it's not ignoring, it's not downplaying, it's just showing up and being with someone who needs us. You can show up physically by hanging out with somebody or spending time with them, or you can show up in other ways like sending a text, saying a prayer, writing a note, or just being a good friend. Whatever it is, choose to show up for somebody else. That's what God did for us with Jesus, and it's what we can do for others. Think about your life as a plate. And on that plate, you have enough room for three people, okay? Like so, got it? And one of these three people needs to be you, okay? Let's call you Ruffles. Hey, Ruffles. Okay, put you here. And the reason that this is you is because self-care is very important, all right? But at any given moment, you have room for two other people, Cheetos Puffs and Good and Gap. And Cheetos. And helping two people, that's manageable. But you don't wanna try to fill your plate with everyone and everything they're 
dealing with. You can't take Cheetos Puffs and his first cousin Hot Cheetos. You can't. You can't take Good and Gather and then take Good and Gather's younger sister too, okay? Bad and Gather. You don't want all that. That can get overwhelming and unbalanced really quickly. Some of you may be in the process of figuring out how to even begin to put yourself on the plate, while others of you need to think about how to take up less space on your plate and make room for others. After all, that's what party starters do. A party starter shows up to be with others in their difficulties. One of the ways you can show up is in your group this week. Your group is a place where you can share what you're walking through and how you're struggling, but it's also a place where you can show up for the people in your circle when they need it too. And I hope you'll practice empathy by supporting others in your group this week.